What's good, Ravens fans? It's your boy, JG, back in the Raven space with you today to react to an article by Pro Football Focus. And today we are going to talk about one move every AFC team should make before training camp. And of course, we're going to focus on the Ravens. Uh, a lot of different moves they could make. Let's talk about this one because I have something that I have to say to Pro Football Focus. And I don't say this for a lot of different teams uh, when the content comes out. I think they're wrong on not just the Ravens, um, but I do think they're right about this. We will start with the Baltimore Ravens, and it says to extend Brandon Stevens. Extend Brandon Stevens. This is what I think is something that the Ravens should get done earlier than it is later. So let's read what they have to say. A third-round pick in 2021, Brandon Stevens has transitioned from a safety to a corner in his three years in the NFL. Starting 16 games as an outside corner for the Ravens in 2023, his 68 PFF coverage grade last year was the second highest mark among the Ravens cornerbacks. And with Ronald Darby moving on and Marlon Humphrey potentially transitioning to the slot, re-signing St Stevens in the final year of his deal is a must. Stevens is still just 26 years old and heading into the prime of his career. The Ravens can re-sign him and pair him with Nate Wiggins their 2024 first round pick and reap the benefits of having one of the better NFL secondaries. This guys is a hundred percent correct. And I wanted to go to his pro football focus grade and we can kind of zoom in here. Um, and again, I do this just for you guys. Of course, you know, pro football focus costs money, but I, I sorted it by defensive plays. So there's a lot of reasons I think that we should be giving uh, Brandon his due and his money, right? And there's a lot of reasons we cover. First, we're going to cover his availability and the fact that he was the workhorse for our defense last year. Guys, this is the amount here of defensive reps, okay? Defensive reps. You can see easily that he is among the most consistent we have and Look at the other players that he's with, right? He played the most snaps. He Number two was Roquan Smith. Number three was Kyle Hamilton. And number four was Justin Medebike. You can argue that these are our top players on our defense easily, right? Now, of course, they. I think they are for sure. Uh, some people still like Marlon Humphrey, um, and I understand that. And then, of course, you talk about Marcus Williams and his potential, uh, even though he's been injured a couple of years. But... I think Kyle Hamilton is the best safety in the league uh, and the most important player on the Ravens. Of course, people think Roquan Smith is the most important player and best player on our defense. Um, and then Justin Matabike is, of course, our best pass rusher. So the fact that Brandon was with them the entire season, basically, you, you have to give him some credit for that. Now, let's go to his pro football focus detail sheet here, and let's talk about some of the things that we see. So uh, first things first, and let me move my face out the way really quickly. I want to try to be able to see all this good stuff that I'm about to show you. So let's move this over here. All right. So you can see when we look at Brandon Stevens, and this is the eye test too, right? Because even though these grades are matching up with the eye test, we don't want to just go on the grades alone, right? When it comes to 2021 to 2022, he was bad, right? He was bad. And the colors for PFF do help you a lot, right? If it's below 50, you're terrible. It'll show red. If it's if it's okay, it's yellow. Um, I, and then if it's good, it's green. But if it's like dark green, it's really good. You can see his pass rush grade. And if it's blue, it's elite, elite level play. You can see here that he was average to bad. I, you know, again, I think he was actually a little bit worse than these um, grades. But last year, he was at the very least good. But I actually think he was better than that. And when we go and break down his individual uh, grades, uh, we can see his pass rush grade was a 73. But again, you know, unless you're Kyle Hamilton, pass rush grade as a cornerback, you, you kind of you have an advantage, right? Because they don't know you're coming most of the time, right? This coverage grade is a 65.5. I think this coverage grade was too low. I think last year he played excellent coverage all, all year long and especially toward the end of the year. There was a point in time where, because Marlon was out there, everyone thought he was the cornerback that could be picked on. And he proved that you have a better chance getting 
yards on Marlon Humphrey than you have getting yards on me, right? You're not getting any yards on me. And he really did prove that last season. And I thought it's just an excellent, excellent show of what he could do um, and his growth and maturity as a player. Now, the article did say something that I thought was interesting. Um, and we'll jump back to it. Uh, but the article stated that they do that Marlon Humphrey will be used in the slot next year um, exclusively. And of course, the Ravens defense, no, no one is exclusive in anything. Um, but Marlon Humphrey is a great player with his hands on uh, the different receivers. And so I, I do think that there's a chance that having the ability to move him to the slot, where in the slot you really can just go up there and rough people up um, because you're playing in, closer to the middle of the field. So there's less ways that the receiver can go, right? Um, and if a receiver in the slot beats you to the outside, it's a little bit more awkward of a throw for a quarterback to make because um, they're usually not used to making that throw. And if he beats you to the inside, you usually have help. Um, and so that's, that would be beneficial for Marlon, and it would be able to use Marlon's skill, I think, to a high level. Now, is Marlon still shifty? That's another thing about slot cornerbacks. And if you look at uh, our, one of our best slot cornerbacks in our history, Ladarius Webb, he wasn't the greatest at hand-to-hand -hand combat because he's a smaller receiver, but his shiftiness allowed him to play the slot cornerback at the highest of levels. Does Marlon have that shiftiness? We'll see. Um, but again, Marlon has the body for outside receiver. But if Nate Wiggins is as good as Nate Wiggins is, then of course that will be something that just doesn't happen. Um, now, having Brandon Stevens on the outside primarily, Nate Wiggins on the outside primarily, and Marlon Humphrey on the outside prim uh, on the inside primarily is a very, very good, good defense. Right, one of the one of the best, I think. Uh, defenses uh, from a secondary perspective uh, in the league, right? We know if Marlon is healthy, what he is. Um, Brandon Stevens proved to me that he can be a number two receiver on most teams in the NFL, right? I'm sorry, number two cornerback on most teams in the NFL. And that is something that a lot of teams can't say they have. The Eagles last year, arguably, their number two couldn't start on any team, Right. Um, when we have seasons where we have receivers that our number two receiver can't be a number two receiver on any team, right? But Brandon Stevens showed that he's a great number two on most teams and you need those type of players, right? If Nate can be the number one that we need and Brandon can be the number two, we're set at cornerback. We're good at cornerback. Marlon can come and fill in. We have other young players that will come fill in, come back from injury as well. Um, and a lot of those players as well, like a Pepe, uh, has – that shiftiness that we like at that uh, slot position. So again, I 100% I agree with this, and I'm going to give him uh, some chairs some more. I 100% agree that Brandon Stevens should be extended. Um, and I really do think that he has the potential to really, really solidify that second cornerback position that we were worried about once Marcus Peters left. And even that season Marcus Peters came back and he was injured, that was a big problem, that second cornerback spot, and they attacked it. Last year, they tried to attack that second cornerback spot, but Brandon stepped in, and he was strong throughout the entire process. And so you cannot be mad um, at that. I, again, I don't usually agree with a lot of these articles, but this one was spot on, and you really can't be mad at the accuracy of that. Um, and you can't be mad because Brandon played at an exceptional level uh, last season, so... Uh, I'm, I'm excited to see what the season holds for Brandon um, and for the defense as a whole with the new defensive coordinator. I want you guys to let me know in the comments below what you think about Brandon. Do you think that he deserves his contract? Um, again, you, you don't want to be negotiating with people if they don't have no time on their contract left. Uh, we're getting close to that with him. And again, you can get him at a good price because I still think the league and the fan bases see him differently than, of course, the uh, I see them and maybe even Derek DaCosta sees them. So you guys let me know in the comments below what you think. Thank you and go Ravens.